This time, I'll be finishing the kitchen install, painting the walls, installing the cabinets and laying the laminate flooring. I'm starting by painting around all the wall edges and power sockets with a small roller. After that, I'm using a large roller, applying the paint in vertical strokes. I've diluted the first coat with 30% water as the walls are freshly plastered. The second coat will be diluted 10% and the final coat will be applied neat. Slight pressure on the leading edge of the roller reduces ridges forming in the overlap. A 2 inch brush is used to cut in around all the trim. I'm also painting the old kitchen, which is now the utility room. With the paint dry, I can start to install the cabinets. These two large panels will form the enclosure for the refrigerator. They're joined together at the top with a small bridging cabinet. I'm setting the cabinet back to allow the door to sit flush with the edge of the panel. I've pre-drilled and I'm securing with four small screws on each side. A couple of quick grip clamps help me fix the other side in the same way. Next, I can stand the assembly up and walk it into place. A spirit level and square help me find the correct position. Once it's located, I can secure it to the wall. Next, I'm starting on the upper wall cabinets. This is an 8mm diameter hole and I'm using 100mm long frame fixings. These small metal brackets will support the cabinet and the cabinets simply hook on. These adjusters help me get the cabinet level. The laser level enables me to align the next cabinet. And I'll repeat the process. The long screws ensure I'm securing the cabinets to the brick and not the drywall. Expanding the adjusters first makes hanging the cabinets easier. With the wall cabinets in place, I can start on the base units. I'm fixing the adjustable feet to the bottom of the cabinets. I've tried to position them so they support the sides as well as the base.
I'm adjusting the feet so they're 170 millimeters from the base, 150 millimeters for the plinth, and 20 millimeters for the finished flooring. Now I can lift the first base cabinet into place. Ensuring it's the correct distance from the laser datum. And double checking with spirit level. I'm spending a little extra time getting this cabinet perfect. Any imperfections here may cause issues with the following cabinets. With the bracket locations marked, I can drill for the fixings. Move the cabinet back, trying not to disturb the feet. One final check, and I can secure in place. I'll repeat the process for the next cabinets. Clamping the cabinets tight together closes any gaps before adding screws. This is a decorative end panel which conceals the side of the cabinet. It's slightly oversized so I'm trimming it to the correct length. I've clamped it in position whilst I double check for level and set proud of the cabinet by the correct amount so the door sits flush with the edge. Screws are concealed behind the hinges and at the back of the cabinet. And it's the same process for the top cabinet end panel. I've rough cut the countertop which I'll have professionally scribed later. Next I'm starting on the opposite side of the kitchen, beginning with the sink cabinet. Small offcuts attached to the side provide somewhere to clamp the corner post to. More screws behind the hinges secure it in place. I'm marking the middle of the corner unit, which the post will put up against. I position the cabinet so the centre mark is at the same depth of the sink cabinet. Once the cabinet is level, I can mark the wall and drill the holes. Lift it back into place. And secure with screws. The sink cabinet can be installed next, but I need to make small notches in the back to allow for the water pipes. Access holes are required in the back for the pipes to come through. I'm drilling small pilot holes from the back and then using hole saws from the front to avoid tear out. Now for the remaining cabinets. The laser level helps me check the cabinets are square along the entire length. There will be an opening for a freestanding dishwasher next to the sink cabinet. I've measured 600mm over and I'm fixing small angle brackets to the wall and the floor. These brackets provide support for the decorative end panel. Once again, double checking for level. I've rough cut the countertops
This side of the kitchen will require a mitre joint, which I'll have professionally cut later. All adjoining cabinets need to be secured together, so I'm pre-drilling and adding interscrews behind the hinges. Next is the valance. The laser distance measurer gives me the exact length required, and it's secured to the base of the cabinets. Before fitting all the doors, I need to attach the hinge plates to the cabinet. The hinges are attached to the doors with screws. I'm using a square to ensure they're straight. The hinges slide over the plates and are secured by tightening a small screw. The bridging cabinet is supplied with a spring-loaded arm which supports the weight of the door, so it requires a few extra pieces of hardware. The draw boxes need to be attached to the draw fronts. And with the fronts attached, I can slide them into the draw cabinet. I've had the countertop professionally mitered and all the apertures have been cut out. Before securing the sink to the countertop, I need to fit the supplied gasket. I've applied varnish to the exposed edges of the aperture before the sink is installed. Metal clips hold the sink in position. I've applied a coloured adhesive filler to the mitre joint and I'm securing it together underneath with connecting bolts. Once the filler is almost dry, I can use a sharp blade to remove the excess. A little gentle persuasion gets it completely flush. Now to fit the rest of the doors. Up stands are next. They're held in place with high strength grab adhesive. Clamps hold it whilst the adhesive cures. The stainless steel backsplash is installed in the same way with more high strength adhesive. I've left a small gap above the upstand to allow for minor movement. The extractor is the first of the appliances to be installed. I've measured the location of the fixing holes which I've transferred to the wall and I'm using more of the 100mm frame fixings. I'll leave the screw heads protruding slightly, so I can easily hang the extractor. Next I mark the remaining mounting holes. And 
here I can just use smaller wall plugs and then tighten all the screws. This bracket supports the top of the chimney. Four machine screws hold everything in place. Finally, I can start to install the laminate flooring by first marking a centre line. I've measured back from the centre line to locate my starting point underneath the cabinets. The boards are laid over a 10mm underlay sheet and are simply clipped together. A few of the boards need a little bit of persuasion. I'm using offcuts of flooring as spaces around the perimeter to provide a 10mm expansion gap. And that's the kitchen complete. The oven and hob have been professionally installed. This is the first time I've attempted to install a brand new kitchen. And overall, I'm happy with the result. So, the cost so far. A professional plumber was 110. The kitchen cabinets were 1,925. A professional joiner was 130. The WC suite that went into the new utility room was 165. Flooring was 50 and the appliances were 380. So the cost of this stage of the project was 2,760 and the cost so far is 126,790. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. If you think I could or should have done something better, then add a comment below. If you have any questions, add those below as well.